the Baal HaTanya, the Alter Rebbe, Rabbi Shnei Zalman of Liadi, had a student, a chassid. And this student once came to the Rebbe, the Baal HaTanya, and he lamented about something. The lament was, he said, he goes to shul in the morning, and until he finds the inner inspiration that helps him daven and connect to the Ein Soif, it takes a long time. He needs to wake up, go to shul, and then he said he would learn. He would learn chesedus, learn it, understand it, try to internalize it, think about it, meditate on it, and really connect to it in a very profound way. The Balatanya demanded from his disciples what's called his boynenus. His boynenus is meditation and mindfulness what they call today meditation and mindfulness in all of the issues that he taught and the reason he taught long maimarim and explained them is because he wanted it should be understood within the realm of the person not just academically with your iq but with your eq emotionally and he says, and then after all this, he feels a, a spark and he's ready to start davening. The problem is by that time, you know, the minion began already and he's always catching up and he feels out of place. And he says, I have a neighbor, somebody who's near me, lives near him and he davens near him in Shul. And he's a chassid of a friend of the Balatanya, a student of the Magad of Mizrich, a Jew who was, his name was, Reb Chaim Chaikol of a city called Amdur. Amdur, A-M-D-U-R. They called him Reb Chaikol Amdur. And he tells the Balatanya, he says, this disciple of Reb Chaikol, he comes to Shul, he comes from the mikveh, he goes to Shul, on Sebrent, he said, and neither Sebrent. Sebrent fire. he's alive, he's burning, he's inspired. He goes into davening. This is an explosion of electricity. I don't have it. And this was a very serious question because, if I may say, he was basically confronting the Balatanya and, like, asking, you know, where did you go wrong, so to speak? And Reb Chaikal Amdura, your colleague, a student of the Magad of Mezrich, got it. His student is on fire, and I'm sitting and trying to find the fire. And the Alter Rebbe, very, very moving, the Alter Rebbe did not answer right away. He put his head, his, he put his forehead down on his hand. He put his hand on his forehead and he went into what's called a hisbeinenus, a trance, so to speak. He began meditating. The chassid was standing there in his room and the Rebbe was meditating for a few minutes. And then he emerged from the meditation. The Alter Rebbe used to speak with a niggin, with a melody. There's a few things that we heard tradition from generation to generation, the niggin with which the Alter Rebbe said it. The Alter Rebbe used to speak in a melody. That's how he spoke, even in regular conversation. So I'm going to say over what I heard from Rabbi El Khan, Shlita, the tradition of Hasidim, what the Alter Rebbe told this Jew and with the melody in Yiddish, and then I'll translate. The Rebbe said, Er brent, Chaikel brent in em, Un mir villen, As mezol alein brennen. He's on fire. Reb Chaikel, his Rebbe, is burning in him. And we want that you should burn on your own. Your fire should be yours. It should be an independent fire. He was teaching him something. This chassid was a great man. Reb Chaikal Amdura was a holy Jew. And the path of many of the students of the Baal Shem Tev, and by the way, there was a disagreement about this. Many of the great tzaddikim felt that the greatest thing they can give their disciples is the feeling of connection to Hashem. They should feel their neshama, their amuna, and their connection to the tzaddik. 
And this Jew was so connected to Reb Chaikel, Reb Chaikel's fire was burning in him. And don't underestimate that. This, we're not talking about a fake fire. He closes his eyes, he picks up his hands, and he makes believe that he's on fire. No, Reb Chaikel brent in him. Reb Chaikel's fire is alive in him. Their relationship was deep. And this was generally the idea of many of the students of the Baal Shem Tov, which was an incredible idea to reveal the nuclear energy of the soul, the power of Emunah, in which we're always connected. And you could see this in all of the works of the students of the Baal Shem Tov throughout the generations. The holiness of the Jew, the holiness of the soul, the love of Hashem to every single Jew. This is like, you know, generic. All the students of the Baal Shem Tov don't stop talking about this. How we create an impact in all of the worlds, the connection of the Jewish people, the whole world is... is, is the whole world is, is really a, a spiritual place. Very powerful, uh, inspirational tidbits that help Jews. It triggered the awareness of a soul of the Nefesh Alekis, as it's called here. And the camaraderie of the Hasidim and their relationship with the Tzaddikim and their Rebbes and their joy allowed his fire and his spirituality to burn inside of them. And this is what the Hasid is alive with. And it's incredible. But the Alter Rebbe said, what we're talking about here is something else. I don't want my fire should be yours. I need you to find your fire. But what happens if I have a log? I'm a log. I'm not a fire. <laughs> I'm a big log. You ever tried to ignite a log? That takes time. <laughs> I can't come and take the log and just put it on fire. It doesn't happen. I spray kerosene. Oh, you remember in camp when you made a bonfire? The fire wasn't working and then one chacham came, right? With the gasoline, with the kerosene, and he sprayed and suddenly there was a huge fire. Was that impressive or what? It was very impressive. What was the problem? The problem is that five minutes later, the fire is down. So you need new kerosene, a new kerosene, a new kerosene. And then somebody would come with newspapers and tissue boxes. It's all good, and sometimes it's very important, and it's certainly geschmack. But if you want the fire to be sustained, and sustained throughout a life, and sustained for hundreds of years, and sustained for eternity, the log has to be on fire. And for that, you have to work with it. You have to splinter it, and dissect it, and disintegrate it, and get it to burn. But when it burns, there's a fire here, because there's a fire from within. That fire is not going to cease. That's the idea of Bederich Islapshus. Every Jew is godly, and there's moments of inspiration, and it's mavatal everything else. But here we're talking about that the animal soul should burn, the Nefesh Abahamas should burn. That's why the Balatanya explained, he wanted to explain. You'll see his Maimarim are so long and elaborate. Why? It's not just that he had a pen, he wrote more. The style, his shit of chassidus, it's called, that's why it's called, he called it chassidus chabad, chachma bin adas, why? He wanted, he felt that the animal soul you have to speak to, you have to educate it. So you have to understand it, you have to explain it to it. And then you can discipline it, educate it, refine it.